Lately, I've been thinking about the importance of safe spaces, what a privilege it is to have them, and how it's not until you've truly experienced being in one that you realize all of the times that you are not. A lot of the changing or the cleansing of my subconscious mind has resulted in me doing the work of taking me back to different scenes in my past, and it's usually the most uncomfortable scenes of my past, and seeing those scenarios from this level of consciousness that I have right now, and energetically holding space for that version of myself to promote healing, I right the emotional wrongs and clear energetically the bad habits that I developed while existing in unsafe spaces. I can't blame myself for who I was in survival mode. And by this emotional time travel, back to places where I felt most unheard, most unseen, most unsafe, to sort of clear out the mental and emotional space of the present version of myself. Because in order to write a better future, I need a clean slate. And in order to create a safe space for the people that I love, I have to learn how to do that by doing that for myself first. And the more that I did this with myself and for myself, I got deep into this quantum and interdimensional version of myself. I started to think, is this presence of unconditional love that I felt in most times in my life just a higher version of myself reaching out interdimensionally? And when the people who go so far into their spiritual walk to see themselves as God, is it because they became aware to their spirit's ability to do this and the power and responsibility that it holds? I don't know. It's There's just a lot of questions and I'm really excited about this topic. So I hope you enjoy taking this walk with me. Welcome to the Raw and a Half podcast where we get real and then some. I am your host Jasmine Siri and every week I will speak on different topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind so we can accomplish our goals from a healed and open place together. So let's get started. So, we have to state the obvious. Not every space will be a safe one, and that's okay. When I was, I won't say younger, I'll say when I was less aware. In the face of difficult topics or experiences that I had, I always wanted to talk about it, and this didn't serve me well at all. Because I was so willing to talk to anyone who would listen, assuming they had good intentions, I was so desperately needing to be heard, it always came around to bite me in the ass because it wasn't what I was saying, it was who I was saying it to that left my feelings unsafe. My entire life, because of the energy that I carried or who I was, people have despised me, like in a real way. Even people that have been older than me would like to seek to humble me in different ways. And I think it's because I've always preferred paying the price for my authenticity than selling out to save face or to have community. When I loosely expressed my imperfect human in the presence of people who secretly saw me as something superhuman, it would always result in my misfortune. And I had to take a step back because it's easy for a person to play the blame game or be in victimhood of, I can't believe this person used my most vulnerable moments against me because he slash she did this to me with what I gave them. Now I can't trust a single soul. And all of this is like, okay, wow. And then what? What type of life exists on the opposite side of this type of thinking. I'll let you know because that's exactly how I thought. And I experienced all of this so you don't have to. That level of thinking, developed out of pain, made me a vibrational match to more situations and scenarios where I experienced the same thing, just in different variations. Sometimes I was on the opposite end of someone else's pain. I'm pretty sure there were a lot of times that I wasn't aware of that I made other people feel unsafe because any person who goes the route of playing the victim is underdeveloped. 
and the lack of knowledge learned from being in those situations where I was hurt resulted in me hurting people in the same way that I've hurt it. So we just continue the cycle until we take back our mind. Here's where we make a difference. Realize that the situation in our lives that teach us to have caution are to help develop discernment, not to force us to live in fear. So let's rewind. Instead of taking the easy route into victimhood of experiencing my vulnerability be used against me, I take full responsibility for the things that I shared. Everything that came from the heart was my truth and it doesn't bring me shame when my truth is in the presence of people who do not align with it or with me. I now know that the person I express my heart to is not responsible for my feelings and I now experience the gift of discovery of their heart's true intentions to make a better judgment of my surroundings. When I'm brave enough to express my truth, more truths come to me, even those that disappoint me. And I am okay and much better now from receiving that knowledge. And maybe this conversation was meant to be had through a meditation or some other professional or really just with myself. Because the person that was unaware with what to do with my truth or my feelings never really had the power to change them or my circumstances in the first place. And I'm thankful for everything that I know now because I can kind of see past that situation to not only service myself when I'm in situations where I feel safe, but I'm able to be a better safe space for the people that I love because I know what it feels to not have that. You know what I'm saying? You know, something about that just feels like a really good stretch. This is how I become my own safe space. Easier said than done. I know. But the more you bring your mind to this, the easier working through things becomes. You're able to truly self-soothe and understand the building blocks of what makes you feel safe. And I had to come to realize that what personally makes me feel safe is not someone coming in and saving me from all of my problems. But if they can listen or just give me really great insight and feedback or some tools on ways that I can still feel like a safe space even when I am alone. That to me is a little bit more resourceful. And that's the level of help I wish to be and that I wish to give the people that I care about and the people that listen to me. I think becoming an adult is just radical acceptance that the people we love are incapable of being everything to us 100% of the time because they are human like us they are going to miss the mark or drop the ball or be unavailable and make mistakes and it is our responsibility to find a level of wholeness that keeps us open to the people we love without expectation because we are our own responsibility and our safety is our responsibility In my familiar relationships, there were ways I wish certain people showed up to create more of a safe space for me, but I had to realize they couldn't be something they never had or have never seen. When I started to live on my own and I had a choice, it was either take on the characteristics of the people I've always known and adopt certain victimhoods or different emotional manipulative tactics, or change the plot and see it from a different angle and maybe develop a different life because even though something was familiar to me it didn't mean it resonated with me and my spirit well and it usually never did and usually sometimes when you're the black sheep of your family it takes you kind of going out on your own to build this branch in your entire family tree of different ways of being, different ways of growing. And if you're someone that calls yourself a black sheep or you're just brave enough to live out authentically without, you know, feeling the shame that maybe your family may make you feel for just not aligning with how they live their lives. I mean, that's just, it's such um, an interesting journey 
you know, you are doing more for your family by stepping out and doing something different from what they've ever seen. But moving on, the same things would apply for my romantic relationships. Not only was there a hint of emotional manipulation through the victimhood I had adopted, I also had this layer of wanting my partner to heal and fulfill the space that having an absent father made. This was a space that no one on earth could fill, but because I was looking for something in men that I never even saw before, there was this level of sabotaging and destroying that I brought into some relationships. I craved safety, but I wasn't able to be safety for them either because it was always about what I wanted or how I wanted to feel. I would show up in relationship as this damaged little bird in search of a safety, but I wasn't in a healthy space to exist in partnership to be a safe space for that person that I was with. And I can't make my partner be the best friend, be the girl's night out, be the person I can vent to and talk with, and also be the man to protect and provide and to nurture my vulnerabilities as a woman. It's just not realistic. And oftentimes when we walk about our life, existing in the victimhood, in the damage, always wanting a safe space but not really truly cultivating it because we don't know how to do it within ourselves, we create just a lot of weight in our relationship that we force our partners to carry when it's never been theirs to begin with. And this is just speaking from a lot of different mistakes, a lot of different experiences that I had where because of how I felt, I always wanted my partners to cater to me without experiencing the full scope. If you say you want a relationship and you say you want partnership, have you ever stopped and asked yourself why you even wanted a partnership or relationship to begin with? Are you wanting relationship? Are you wanting friendships and bonds to kind of make you feel less alone in the pain that you have? Or do you truly feel like you have something to offer someone else with the experiences that you have? Maybe by the way that you experience happiness or maybe by the way that you love. You know, I think it was very childish for me to assume that a person is going to come into my life or the people outside of me were going to come in and fix these different parts of me. It's just not a realistic way of existing in partnerships. And I think I got more intentional about safe spaces and what that meant for me because I wanted to start a YouTube channel that was a digital safe space. And I started to really unpack what it meant for me to feel safe, what it meant for me to be a friend, what it meant for me to be a partner. And so often, I think in a lot of times, like it's natural because I, I, I'm not going to lie, a lot of women in my life, they're resilient, but they're runners, At the face of any discomfort, they run away. And what that does is serve the victimhood. So when you build resilience out of the victimhood, you start to realize that you take defense very easily. And when I did that, I did not experience a lot of growth. And now I'm kind of slowly working on slowing myself down when I'm in, you know, conversations with my partner and they're, I'm l- actually listening. I'm listening not to play the victim. I'm actually listening to understand the person. I'm able to say like, oh, okay, I didn't, I only see things from my side. I didn't see it from the way that you did. And because I now see it from a full scope, I realize that I'm now on the defense, you know? I don't know. Safe spaces are inclusivity, respect, confidentiality, but honesty and support. Being non-judgmental because you want to help and you want to help yourself and you want to help others, but that takes such a deep level of honesty that I think so many people are not really ready for. Because when we want safe spaces, what we truly want is like 
we really want the desire of our ego to make us feel seen, heard, beautiful, accepted, loved, all of these things that are, you know, ego boosts. But when you have someone in your space that is able to be honest with you about, you know, ways that you're damaging your circumstances or your relationships by the ways that you think, ways that you can improve, ways that you, you know, could probably, you know, check your blind side. I, I think if I can really like lay this out plainly, a safe space to me is someone noticing my blind spots someone who loves me enough to say yeah but what about this it's like i see that you're doing this thing but because i love you i'm in your corner and this is also what i see too and you have to be honest with yourself about being able to accept that you know because it comes from a level of truth that you may not be ready for you know I think that is all that I have for today. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. It means so much to me. At this point now, this is the night before, but I'm almost at 20K or I just hit 20K subscribers. Thank you so much for just wanting to be a part of the community, wanting to be a part of my journey and a part of me. I hope you stick around. Um, do not forget to follow me on Instagram at jasmine.siri and I hope to see you all in my next one. Thank you.